how can we as a commercial pilot get a better understanding of our aircraft systems? Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and you are listening to the Commercial Pilot Podcast brought to you by our number one rated online ground school. Visit M0A Trial. M0Atrial.com to take a free two-week, no-strings-attached trial of our uh, number one rated online ground school. See why the Aviation Consumer Magazine rated it number one, the best, uh, and see it all for yourself. It is just absolutely outstanding what this amazing team, I can't even take credit for it, what this amazing team we have. m 0 it as of this recording, 33 team members. It's grown beyond my wildest dreams. It's absolutely incredible, but those dreams keep on continuing. That vision keeps on coming, and uh, we are just blessed. And maybe you're listening to this, and maybe one day you'll be a part of that M0A vision and team as well. M0A Nation, it is so rewarding to become a commercial pilot, but becoming a commercial pilot also comes with great responsibility and burden that you need to be aware of with that. And you know, passing the check ride is just half the battle. And we're gonna look at this, we're gonna look at this from a check ride perspective today. And you all know about the, I'm never here to sell, but you know, past your commercial pilot check ride is now out on Audible. Uh, so you're able to uh, have that read to you. Um, you may get tired of hearing my voice though, but it's there for you on Audible. I know many of you listen to this podcast as well on Audible, so you can kind of double dip between the two. Um, we're going to look at aircraft systems from the perspective of a check ride, but then I have to always add my real world twist to everything. Let me start with a check ride perspective and let me even go further back to a story. If you asked me, Areas I was strongest and areas I was weakest. And we just had these big topics. Aviation weather, airspace, systems, regulations. Like we just had these big picture, um, very similar. I know many of you are in our online ground school, very similar to how we break down the online ground school. Big picture topics. I'd have to be honest with you. If the list was in favorites, or if the list was in most difficult for me to understand, um, aircraft systems would, would be at the, at the wrong side of both those lists, meaning aircraft systems is my greatest weakness and for a long time was not a passion of mine. I am not um, mechanically inclined. Um, I'd like to be, I like to do certain projects um, I would like to become an a and mechanic one day, right? I mean, you have a fear of heights, you should jump out of airplanes. Although I've done that once and that seems unnecessary to do it twice. Um, maybe I'll just work, work on my fear of heights in other ways. But if systems is an area I'm weak, I should continue to brush up on it and pursue becoming an aircraft mechanic, which is something I'd actually, in a very serious note, like to do. So there's that aspect of it the aircraft systems aspect of it. How did I, someone who is very weak in systems, thank God, never fail a check ride? Some I probably should have. I learned early on and had an instructor teach me, really this instructor was preparing me to become an instructor, I didn't even know it, to draw my systems to draw my systems. Maybe you have a very smart CFI that has you doing this as well. But when you go on to become a CFI, I hope you have even your private and your instrument pilot applicants and students, learners, sorry, that's the new word, right? Learners do this as well. Could you draw for me the fuel system for your aircraft? What do I mean? I mean, draw the two big tanks. My fuel caps are here. I'm going to write vented next to them because they're vented. Or this one is vented, this one is not. Or here's a fuel vent here. This tank holds 20 gallons. Uh, 20 of, uh, holds 20 gallons. 19 usable, one unusable per tank. I actually draw, the reason I have unusable fuel is because of this. Uh, this then heads down to my fuel selector valve, which heads to my car, and we just draw. It, it can be a very crude drawing. 
but can you draw your fuel system? This is gonna sound crazy. Could you give me a crude, rough, overview style drawing of your electrical system? Hey, there's two buses. On this bus is one, two, three, four. On this bus is the four, five, six, seven. If this fails, this is a backup. The battery connects here. The alternator fits in the picture here. It's a 60 amp alternator. It's a 30, you know, 28 volt system. All these little numbers and details that I can draw to show that I'm not looking for a detailed schematic that would allow me to assemble your, your electrical system. I'm just looking for like some Ikea style drawings and instructions, right? That could help me a little bit along the way to better understand what we're trying to do here. Could you do the same if you're gonna do your commercial in a complex aircraft? We would draw the propeller system as well. We'd get, you know I'm talking when I say fly weights, these little L-shaped brackets for a overspeed or underspeed conditions and, we, and we'd show what are the fly weights doing? Where is the oil and the fluid through our propeller system moving in an overspeed or underspeed condition? We would show all those things. What's the manifold pressure gauge showing? What's the RPM showing in certain conditions? What is overspeed versus underspeed? Do we want to always keep manifold over RPM or RPM over manifold, right? And these are the things you explain and are able to show when you draw things. I'll give you, and by the way, this transcends aircraft systems. Let me give you an analogy. Um, I was very, very blessed uh, last year to pursue my private pilot and instrument pilot in rotorcraft. Actually did both check rides same day. Talk about a grueling process, two check rides. One check ride in a day is enough, let alone two check rides. Pass the private pilot, obviously one's contingent on the other, right? Pass that, landed, ate a sandwich, and he didn't even want to break. He just wanted to keep going. He drove up from Orlando to do it. So it was just crank, crank, crank through it. And uh, on instrument. I know many people don't earn their instrument helicopter, but it was one of those just because kind of things. And, and I plan to continue it, just COVID kind of put a damper uh, on everything with that. Anyways, even though I was pursuing private pilot rotorcraft, I'm not familiar with rotorcraft systems to start, totally different ball game. Maybe the same Lycoming engine, but a little bit different right? I am, um, now I am, but at the time I was not familiar with the aerodynamics of helicopters. They have something called LTE. When I think of LTE, I think of my phone and I think, oh, I don't have any LTE. Well, LTE in a helicopter is a bad thing. It's loss of tail rotor effectiveness. And you have to draw that. And what are the circumstances and the wind conditions that cause LTE? And I would draw the, the three different types of LTE and how the wind is going through the tail rotor to cause, and just dissymmetry of lit, all these different principles that were new to me. And now I'm talking, I know this is a lesson on systems, but maybe this is a lesson on drawing, aircraft artistry, I don't know. I, I would draw everything. I remember showing up for that check ride for rotorcraft and he was asking me about LTE and I said, actually, I have a drawing here I'd like to show you. And I drew them the night before and obviously had an opportunity to make sure they were correct. And I drew them two or three times and was kind of talking aloud as I was drawing them to myself. And it's almost like I made CFI lesson plans for a private pilot level check ride. I passed. I'd argue maybe the examiner was impressed. I never asked. But it gave me something to work off of it gave me the repetition and it gave me a different way. It's one thing to, you're clearly probably maybe an auditory learner or that's, that's in your realm of possibility because you're listening to this. Some of you are watching this as well or listening to this in a, another tab while you're working. This is another means of learning for you. I'd imagine anyone who listens to the podcast probably has the books on audio, audiobook already on top of that. You're consuming this extra content as you dive into all these things, right? Sometimes drawing it out for visual learners and, and speaking aloud for the kinesthetic, just the touch portion of that and the audio of hearing yourself back to it. I jokingly tell people, you should start even at the private pot level teaching these concepts. You wanna understand Bernoulli's principle, you wanna understand your fuel system, start teaching it to anybody that'll listen. Your son, your daughter, 
your spouse. We were joking the other day, someone said they, they, they were teaching aerodynamics their cat the other day. I, I don't care, it's a good listener, right? Whatever it takes, thinking and talking and doing out loud. Back to systems though. Systems were a weakness for me, so I opted to draw them instead. And when you draw your systems, it just opens up, it, it, it opens up your understanding. It helps give a, a uh, what's called a memory trace as well. I'll, I'll share with you an interesting story. And um, I wanna say I learned this from my, from my good friend, uh, Peter Brown. Uh, Peter's the author of the book, Make It Stick. Um, great book, he, he's on as a consultant. You hear me talk so much about the science of learning. I learned it all from Peter. He and I uh, talk uh, at least once every single month and he's helping us add the science uh, of learning to our learning management system, of which many of you are members of, of our online ground school, and why you understand why we have such a great success rate. It's thanks to Peter. Um, and in there, he talks about how, gosh, I wanna say, uh, I want to say it was Mark Twain, perhaps, um, that created, it could have been Church. I can't remember who, who it was. It was a prominent figure whose name you would know, a Twain or Churchill, someone, I guess those are very different people. Um, but when educating their children, they had an upcoming test on the English monarchy. So maybe it was, maybe it was a Churchill more so. They had an upcoming test in school to understand the lineage of the English monarchy. And when you start getting into Henry IV and the V and, and all Prince Edward and all these different numeric values with names, the same names over and over, he went out and has this long piece of property and he shared, he created a memory trace, meaning, they would walk through their property and they'd walk past the chicken coop and, and they'd say, oh, when we walk past the chicken coop, that reminds you of, of Henry IV. I'm making stuff up. English monarchy is not my, not my thing, by the way. Been there many, many times. Couldn't tell you much about it or who's married to who. I don't follow any of that stuff, right? But they'd walk past the chicken coop and that would remind the kids of, remember Henry IV? Because he loved you know, scrambled eggs every single morning. Again, I'm making stuff up here. Then they'd walk past the garden. That would remind them of Prince William III because, the, you know, he gardened. Every, and they created what's called this memory trace. And when it came time for class and it came time for the exam, the kids literally just took a mental stroll through their yard. Chicken coop, Henry IV, um, garden, you know, William III, and they just had this lineage of this monarchy memorized by creating a memory trace. When you begin, and this is supposed to be about aircraft systems, I promise I'll reel this in, I just get really, really excited about the science of learning and, and, and tactics, and I hope you're, you're hearing this, realizing this applies to things other than systems, Jason. When you start to draw things like this, you create, in a way, a memory trace. When you add a muscle movement, in the case of the kids, it was the walk, it was the visual, and it was the associations. In your case, it's the physical of drawing, it's the, the visual because it's an image you can commit to memory, it's an image you can burn into your mind that you can see in your mind's eye, that you can see it again, and you can know the numbers of your fuel system. And you can learn these sort of things. That is how we work through. We create a memory trace what is what we're really doing when we build out these drawings. And this doesn't matter. Visual, kinesthetic, auditory, it, it doesn't really matter. Those aren't actual learning styles. What those are called are learning preferences. You learn in all modalities. Learning is taking place as you're listening to me right now. Learning is taking place if you're looking me in the eyes right now. Learning is taking place if there's just a keynote slide over this and you saw the text or saw an image. It doesn't matter. Learning is taking place no matter what with all of that. You do have a certain preference though. Maybe it's more visual. Maybe it's more auditory. It's your preference. That doesn't mean you can't learn from the other types. Give this drawing, this visualization, this kinesthetic touch 
a try, auditory learners, is what I'm reaching out for that. Could you draw your aircraft systems, fuel system, electrical system, not the full schematic, your propeller system. Hey, uh, TAA, Technically Advanced Aircraft, can you draw the PFD and the MFD and then just break it down into flight data computers and AHARs and magnetometers? And how does all that then relate back to the electrical system? How does it, how does, what is my pitot tube connected to? What is, what, is it a flight data computer? What, what, what is pulling that data in? If I lose the flight data computer, where am I gonna get red X's on my G1000? If, I, if my AHARs don't align properly, what's gonna happen? What does AHARs affect? What does AHARs stand for, by the way? Like these are the questions you need to be answering on these drawings and detailing that out. I go on and on. This is such a little passion project topic for me, but. M0 Nation, you all are outstanding. Once again, m0atrial.com. Hey, I know Oshkosh is basically here. If you're gonna be at Oshkosh, will you come say hi, please? I'd love to give you a, a fist bump. I think we're still fist bumping in today's day and age. Soon, it'll be back to like hugs and high fives and handshakes and everything else. But for now, fist bumps. We're gonna be in Hangar B, Hangar Bravo. Also, the Thursday evening of Oshkosh, we're playing a very exclusive, top secret, ultra awesome private m 0 party for our best customers and clientele. I'd argue that's you if you've listened to the past 16 minutes of me rambling about memory traces and confusing you know, English monarchies, right? <laughs> I know a lot about aviation, but certain other topics, just don't do it for me. Um, I can't, can't wait to read the comments on this going, Jason, you're making up things about English monarchies. But you got the idea what a memory <laughs> trace is, right? I, I apologize, I don't follow it. Um, what was I going to say? Hey, will you come to the ultra-exclusive M0A party? It's Thursday night. Reach out to Sarah, sarah at m0a.com if you want to learn more about that and possibly get an invite. And maybe we'll let you even bring a plus one. Check it out. Email Sarah, S-A-R-A-H at m0a.com. Have a blessed, amazing, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember... The good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. I'll see you.